Hello to you all and welcome to our service for the 10th Sunday after Trinity and welcome to my caravan. We do hope that your week has been a good one, perhaps as you've been putting into practice some of those servant qualities that we were talking about last week. Now as you may have heard me say before, last year a stray cat turned up in our garden. It was very emaciated, not much fur left, and I honestly didn't think it would live for much longer. But over a period of a few weeks we fed and nurtured her back to health. And if you are watching online, you will have just seen this cat a year on. You might even be wondering whether she's perhaps a little too overfed now. Recently a hedgehog has been visiting us too. The hedgehog is quite keen to sample the cat's food. Well, the two of them have been eyeing each other up and now they are sharing food. I'm not sure that the cat has got much option as the hedgehog is very persistent. But last night a fox turned up too, also sniffing out the last crumbs of the cat's food. It's good to share your table. After all, Jesus taught us to ask for our daily bread. Not my daily bread, but our daily bread. The emphasis being on sharing and community. And that's partly why I'm in the caravan today, because this is where I make my bread. This is where I mix the dough and knead the dough and let it rise or prove. And then later on, I'll bring it in and bake it in the oven. This particular bread's going to become a pizza to share. 
Today we're going to hear about the gift of food that Jesus offers as he calls himself the bread of life, the living bread. How those who believe in him will never be hungry, but have eternal life. It's as if we have life beyond life through the bread of life found in Jesus. But before we begin to open the gift of God's word, let us join together in greeting one another. The Lord be with you, and also with you. In a moment of stillness, let's give thanks for all the things we have got right this week, and bring to mind the things we got wrong this week. As we listen to the words of our opening prayer, and as we prepare ourselves to seek and meet with God. Heavenly Father, giver of all good gifts, we come before you today as members of your body. As we join together in praise and worship, may we learn from you and each other. As we rest in your presence, build us up, Lord, we pray. Amen. And so we come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden, to ask for forgiveness and peace. We have not always worshipped God our Creator. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We've not always followed Christ as our Saviour. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We've not always trusted in the Spirit as our guide. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Listen, for the Lord who created us says, I forgive you. Forgive others. Forgive yourself. Be at peace. Amen.
Today's reading is taken from chapter 6 of John's Gospel. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. I wonder how many of us like eating bread. We may enjoy a good thick slice lathered in butter and with a dollop of our favourite preserve plastered over it. Or maybe we like it toasted with cheese melted on it. Of course there are many ways to eat the staff of life, a phrase so often used to refer to bread. And there are many types too. Gone are the days of just white or brown, sliced or unsliced. In fact, nowadays, there are so many artisan breads to delight us that it can be difficult to choose at times. I mean, what is tiger bread all about? Anyway, during these strange times, I have been led to believe that people were getting hooked once more on making their own bread and even experimenting with new concoctions, and two that appeared to share first place were banana bread and sourdough. It's fairly obvious what banana bread is made of, but sourdough has quite a peculiar quality about it, in that it has to be made from a starter of a fermented flour and water mix, to which you keep adding small amounts of flour and water every few days to help it grow. And the amazing thing is, the more you feed it, the more it keeps growing and giving. It's a bit like a living thing. In fact, some fermented flour mix has been going for 65 years and is still being used today to make the bread. So I began to think about all these different breads, and there are many. And I started to ask myself, what type of bread would I be and why? Am I soda bread, dense with a thick crust? Or a whole wheat loaf with a rich flavour and very good for you? Maybe I'm a pita bread, good at holding things. Or a brioche, a soft, sweet pillow. And let's not leave out that tiger bread. Perhaps I am none of these. But what would you be? In today's Gospel, we hear Jesus mention bread an awful lot, even telling everyone clearly what type of bread he is. I am the bread of life. 
I am the living bread. I wonder, what might that mean for us? I can well recall many, many years ago that on hearing those words, or similar, for the first time, I thought what a load of nonsense. But you see, then I didn't understand. I hadn't tasted the bread that was being spoken of. If you like, my eyes and ears, my heart too, hadn't been opened to the reality of who Jesus was and is. Not unlike some of those listening to him that day. After all, many saw him as only the son of a carpenter. They had yet to come to recognise him as so much more. Jesus used something so familiar, so ordinary, to explain something so incredible about himself and the gift he offers to everyone. And so my next question is, what do we understand when Jesus speaks about the type of bread he is? Do we understand and believe that this bread isn't about sustaining us physically, but about satisfying and sustaining something much deeper, our spiritual hunger and life? Perhaps we do, perhaps we don't. Do we understand and believe that this bread is waiting to be consumed daily, is eternal and everlasting, never past its sell-by date? Perhaps we do. Perhaps we don't. Jesus waits patiently to be invited into our lives today and every day, to be with us in life and death forevermore. Perhaps we understand that. Perhaps we don't. And that's really not a problem for Jesus, because regardless of what we do or do not understand, Today he waits patiently with us here, waits for us to recognise who he is, waits for his invitation. There are many different breads on offer nowadays, and if we use our imaginations and think of them as loosely representing the variety of life choices on offer and the directions they can take us, my question now is, are we ready to take this Jesus bread down off the shelf, maybe for the first time, or where we may have put it away for a while, and try it, taste this living bread? Earlier, I asked what type of bread we might think of ourselves as being. Well, I'm wondering if the choice that now would make the most sense would be sourdough for this is the bread created from something living, from something that keeps growing and giving of itself, is never-ending. And you know, in that way, it is not dissimilar to the bread of life we recognise as Jesus. Wouldn't it be great to be a part of that, to be sourdough for Christ? What do you think? Bread is so basic and uncomplicated and yet so much a part of our lives. Someone once said, Jesus is the bread of life, so treat him with as great importance as actual food. So I wonder, if perhaps the next time we hold a piece of bread in our hands, let's cradle it gently for a moment and pause a while. Be grateful for the life it sustains, and then remember with thanks, Jesus. Jesus, the living bread, the bread of life, who says, whoever comes to him will never be hungry, and whoever believes in him will never be thirsty. Then enjoy. Amen. Let us pray. 
Lord Jesus, true bread from heaven, giving life and refreshment to the world, fill our lives with your goodness. Fill your church with your presence, that we may live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Lord God, giver of all good gifts, we thank you for all that satisfies and sustains us, for all the love you have given us. We pray for the right use of talents within your church, that gifts and possessions may be neither hoarded or squandered, that the young may be given a good example to follow. Lord, make us a gracious people, a generous people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all who labour to provide for us. We pray for any whose work is hard or tedious. Guide all who influence the well-being of the earth. We pray for workers in industries, factories or mines for ecologists and all who work in conservation for the protection of the rainforests. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all beauty, we pray for areas defaced or destroyed we remember people living in wretched dwellings and slums, all who are in areas deprived of beauty or whose lives are in danger. Lord, be with us in our homes and with our loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, the protector of all, we pray for any deprived of work, of their homes, of their well-being. We remember all whose land has been ravaged by war, all places that have been pillaged through greed we pray for all whose harvests will fail this year. We remember those who are ill, those with long-term illness, and those who have recently become sick. And in a moment of quiet, we lift up to the Lord those whom we personally know to be suffering. May God's powerful healing hand be upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Glory to you, Lord, for all who have passed beyond hunger and thirst and have tasted of heavenly food. All who rejoice in life everlasting. We remember those who have recently died and pray for their grieving families and friends. We pray for loved ones who have gone before us, all those who have triumphed over suffering and death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Collect for this Sunday. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage never to lose hope, but always bring our prayers before you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we say together our benefice prayer. Ever living, ever loving God, we thank you for our church family and your world that we serve. Grant that we may honour you in our prayer and praise. Share the good news of your love and build up all through loving service. Help us to give everyone a place to belong and a way to follow Jesus. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our time is drawing to a close now and a new week lies ahead for all of us. May we be mindful of Carol's words to us and the next time we hold a piece of bread in our hands let's cradle it gently, pause and be grateful for the life it sustains and then remember with thanks Jesus, the living bread, the bread of life and let us remember to share this bread and our table as an act of love and thanks with the hungry, the lost, the neighbour, friend or creation itself. So let's pray. We go out in your name, filled with the gift of life. May we be willing to receive the bread of life. May we be willing to share the bread of Jesus. May we be willing to offer our table with thanks and love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us all today and evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.
Jesus lift my eyes from fading things All I want is to be with you Everlasting, only King You're higher, rise Father You speak my soul God above all, open my eyes to your lips. Show me.